And while the political and governmental and wealth get wealthier and people are getting poorer, actually the middle class is beginning to diminish. But God is restoring the middle class. He's restoring all things. And we are in such a time and season right now where things are being released. Again, I've shared about the three winds, the three whirlwinds, the first whirlwind that came through and is still maintaining is one that will peel back and expose evil and wickedness. The second one will begin to drop provision. It will start sprinkling and then it will increase and it will increase to where it begins to pour out. And we will see the earlier and latter rain come together. And harvest will be increased. I don't know how long this will last. And the third wind that will come will come to remove the body of Christ. Amen. In Psalm 103, would you turn there with me? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Psalm 103. In verse 1. Let's speak it together. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Now, I want you to know that he repeats this twice. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I like to say all my soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, all your strength. Bless him. And how do you bless him? You praise and worship him. That's the greatest way you can show him that you're grateful. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do what? Forget not all his benefits. I said all. All his benefits. Don't forget his benefits. Benefits are a part of your inheritance. Amen? In fact, they are attached to your inheritance. Many forget and lose sight of the benefits of salvation. Remember, Jesus said something. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If you got a contract and don't know what it's about, the enemy will take advantage of you. You must proclaim the promises and covenant of God to your enemy. Or he will take them. Does everybody get it? The enemy goes in any area that you let him. The devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? And many people forget all the benefits. They might remember a couple of them, but they don't know them all. And the enemy takes advantage of them. He says, who what? Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. These are all a part of benefits. Who redeems your life from destruction. Have you been redeemed from destruction? Every one of us was on a path of destruction. Every one of us has been sick. Every one of us has been healed. It doesn't stop. It's not a one-time event. Event benefits are continuous because it's a part of an inheritance. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, not just one day, every day. Who satisfies your mouth with good things, not bad things. So that your youth is what? Renewed like the what? Eagles. Oh, snap. You know what an eagle's delicacy is? Serpents, snakes. Oh, snap. He soars high above and looks for a snake to move. 
and he targets it on it, and it attacks it, kills it. And that's his delicacy. We are not to forget our benefits. The Spirit has led me today to speak on unlocking your inheritance. <clears throat> In Psalm 68. So don't forget, amen? But first you got to know what the benefits are. If you don't know what the benefits are, you don't get them. That's why many people call themselves Christians and, and blunder so many times because they don't even use the word of God to parallel anything with what's going on in, per, in, the, in the present day events or how to fight the enemy. They go to church and call themselves Christians, but they don't partake in the word of God. Remember, the word of God is recorded words by the Spirit of God. These words are life. And when you speak them, you eat them. Amen? And what you eat is what you become. And confession brings possession. Oh, yes. Psalm 68, verse 19. Is everybody there? <clears throat> Let's speak it together. Blessed be the Lord who what? Daily loads us with benefits. In other words, they're always there. But many people miss them. He is the God of our what? Salvation. Our salvation. Our God is the God of salvation. And to God the Lord belong escapes from what? Death. So daily, he, we have daily benefits attached to his salvation. Salvation is something that is salvaged. In fact, there are a lot of people out there that go deep seas in salvation looking for treasure. When they find a ship that's been sunk and they salvage the ship, they find wealth. Amen? Amen? Well, you and I are part of the salvation of God. And it says in here, the benefit is to escape of death for us. Does everybody get it? That's a part of your benefit. That's a part of your inheritance. Where there's an inheritance, there's benefits. But if you don't know these benefits, the enemy will take advantage of you. That's why the word says, no weapon formed against us can prosper, right? He who is in me is greater than he is in the world. Those are all the promises of covenant associated with your inheritance and benefits. More people are more interested in what they can get out of the benefits of their employment. Their retirement. I can tell you something. There's a lot better one from him. Man will always let you down. He will never let you down. How many times people have taken counsel and decided to go to ways of the world from their benefits instead of God's benefits and it caused nothing but shame and harm. Psalm 116. Verse 8. Everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. For you have delivered my soul from what? Amen. Death. That's a part of a benefit, isn't it? What if you don't know that? How many people become sick and don't know that part of the benefits is becoming healed? Amen. For you have delivered my soul from death and my eyes from tears and my feet from failing. I will what? Walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, I what? I spoke. What did he speak? His benefits. I am greatly afflicted. He knew he was afflicted, but he wasn't going to allow his affliction to prevent him from speaking the benefits and promises and covenant of God and standing firm on them. 
I believe, therefore I spoke. I am greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are what? Liars, because the world will lie to you. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? In other words, how can I repay him for all the good benefits he's got for me? I will take up the cup of salvation. I will call upon the name of the Lord, and I will pay my what? My vows to the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the what? The death of his saints. He doesn't mean physically. He doesn't mean spiritually. He means emotionally. Denying yourself. He says, I delight to see my children deny themselves. I, I delight in seeing them deny the ways of the world and the traditions of men and take up what I promise them. I delight in that. Because I am a God of covenant and inheritance. Amen? Oh, Lord, truly I am your servant. Are you his servant? I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving or the sacrifice of what? Praise. I will call upon the name of the Lord. And I will pay my vows to the Lord, now in the presence of all of his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. What was this vow offering up the sacrifice of praise? Vows are associated with requirements of unlocking your inheritance. The first thing we need to constantly do is get in his presence. The lack of his presence, the lack of remembrance. Does everybody understand that? The lack of his presence, the lack of remembrance. Remembrance of what? His benefits. Because his presence will always remind you of his benefits. When there's lack of his presence, there's lack of reminding of his benefits. People become more worldly because of the lack of God's presence. It says, but who can enter? We must have clean hands and a what? Pure heart. Amen. Clean hands and a pure heart. That's what allows us into his presence. So these are requirements of unlocking your inheritance. Now I want you to know that your inheritance just doesn't come in one day and unfloods you, you know, floods you out and takes you. Your inheritance released piece by piece. Piece by piece. In Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 7. Let's speak it together, please. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace or his plan, which he made to abound toward us. Toward who? Towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In him also we have obtained a what? An inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the glory of his praise. Again. Our, we, are, we have attained an inheritance in the Holy Spirit as the guardian of our inheritance. He is the overseer. He's the one that's always aligning us with the requirements to release our full inheritance. Does everybody get it? God wants you and I to receive the full inheritance. Some people only receive partial. Again, our inheritance is released piece by piece. 
in Hebrews chapter 10. Unlocking your inheritance. Oh, happy days. Hebrew 10.35. Therefore what? Do not cast away your confidence, which has a great reward. Is this reward associated with your benefits? Is these benefits associated with your inheritance? Yes. For you are in need of what? Endurance, patience, endurance, long-suffering. We love to suffer, don't we? So that after you have done what God has commanded you to do, you may receive the promise of your inheritance. Does everybody get it? Amen. So how many times, you know, every day God asks you to do something, right? Every day he's asking me and you to do something. What's he trying to do? Get our inheritance to us. It says he daily loads us with benefits. How many people miss the benefits of God? Not fulfilling the fullness and then unlocking their inheritance because they're not hearing what God is asking them to do and they just go by how they feel, what they think, and what's going on before them. There really isn't that connection. Anybody ever make a mistake? Don't raise your hands. Amen. Amen. Did you ever eat something you wish you didn't? <laughs> Snap. Did you ever go somewhere you wish you didn't? Did you ever start watching something? You're like, oh my God, this, I know more of this. People told you all kinds of good things about something and you went there and found out it was disgusting. You know why? Because they don't see the same way you do. And again, these are areas where God is always trying to release something, but the enemy is always trying to steal something. So in this, without being connected... Again, what's the first thing is required to maintain our benefits and inheritance? His presence. They are released from his presence. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Where is your inheritance released from? His presence. Amen? His presence. Praise God. Is everybody okay? All right. Verse 37. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. So we are in need of endurance. You know, it takes endurance to press in and touch God. When you touch his heart, he touches you. It takes endurance every day to be disciplined. You must be disciplined. The word talks about many people being unstable. Unstability. Unstable individuals are always missing the benefits of God. And they're always blaming everybody else, grumbling and complaining. And then blaming God why he hasn't done what he's supposed to do. And he keeps saying, I keep sending it out, but you keep moving on me. You allow the enemy to steal. Amen? Amen. Uh, so we are in need of endurance. So after we have completed each command, you receive another piece of your inheritance. Does everybody get it? Ephesians 5. <clears throat> Verse 1, Ephesians 5, verse 1, unlocking your inheritance. You know, the word says, draw near to God and God will draw near to you, right? Amen. So as you begin to draw near to the Lord every morning, 
and you begin to get closer and closer to him and he begins to get closer and closer to you, all of a sudden his presence comes. Amen? And now all of a sudden, you know what happens? The word of God becomes alive in you into remembrance. And you're able to start declaring his promises, his covenant. David always said, Lord, your word says. Your word says. Your word says. God, David was always reminding God of his word. Amen. Always. Even Jesus said it is written, right? Verse 1, let's speak it. Therefore be imitators of, of God as dear children. In other words, be imitators of the one that releases your inheritance. <laughs> He's the one that gave you the inheritance. So we're to imitate him. Now think about this. Because when you imitate him, he's actually given his inheritance to himself. Hello? Christ is given an inheritance to Christ. You know, Jesus Christ is not Christ's last name. Amen? <laughs> it's Jesus the Christ. But I want you to grab hold of something. We talked about this the other day. It says that he who's in Christ is a new creation. That we are grafted into the family of Christ. That we are adopted in. Amen? So in reality, your last name is now Christ. Because you're Christ. I get questions all the time. People think I'm Indian. They want to know what tribe I come from. I told them Judah. And then they'll say, well, no. And I said, no, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not Indian. I said, well, what are you? I said, I'm Christ. My, my blood now runs from the throne room of heaven, not from my heritage of in family. I have a new in, inheritance. Somebody got it? My worldly inheritance will fade, disappear. No good. But there's an eternal one that's much better. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. Verse 2. So walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as it is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting but rather giving thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any what? inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. In other words, there is no eternal inheritance. from no. So would that disqualify you from your inheritance? Yes. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of what? Disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. Oh, hallelujah. So we want to imitate the one that is the creator of our inheritance, amen, and avoid the things that delay or prevent or stop the release of your inheritance. We want to avoid those things. In Genesis 25, Genesis 25. <clears throat> oh, happy day. I want you to know that we are entering a time where a large piece of your inheritance is about to be released. It's coming. Verse 29. Genesis 25, 29. Let's speak it. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field and was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same red stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Adam. 
But Jacob said, sell me your birthright as of this day. I'm telling you, Jacob's vision was a totally different than Esau's. Jacob was looking at inheritance. Does everybody get it? Esau was looking at himself. And Esau said, look, I'm about to die. Well, he was supposed to. <laughs> Died himself. Amen? Or else then he would have got the inheritance. But because he wasn't willing to die to himself. What is this birthright to me, he says. When you are born in the spirit of Christ, you have a birthright. That birthright is called your inheritance. And with your inheritance comes benefits. Amen? Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? But Jacob wanted the inheritance. Why? Because Esau was actually the older one. He, came, he was supposed to come out first. And he did, completely. But Jacob had a different look on things. Esau was a hunter. Jacob was a gentleman. Esau looked different. First thing I think, there was a seed gene of Nephilim in him that came down the family line because he was the same hunter just like Nimrod. Does everybody understand? And so Jacob was after, see Esau would have gotten the inheritance, but Jacob was the one that wanted it. So there was a battle. In fact, the Lord told Jacob's mother and Esau's mother, there would be two nations in you. And they would battle against one another. In other words, there was two different seeds in, him, in her. One was from another race. And so Jacob knew he had to fight for this inheritance. And so did Jacob's mother. In verse 33, and Jacob says, swear to me as of this day. So Esau swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. Then he ate and drank and arose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, his inheritance, the benefits of God. And this is where the Adamites came from. Remember the ites? Yo. Esau forgot the importance of his inheritance and exchanged it for worldly inheritance. This is the plan of Satan's kingdom against me and you. People are selling their eternal inheritance for a temporary one. Now again, the devil can't take your inheritance, but you can give it. Many people give it away. Romans 8. They give it away for drugs. They give it away for sex. They give it away for sin, transgressions, and iniquities. They give it away. For a moment of pleasure. Wealth and fame. Vanity. Romans 8, verse 12. Unlocking your inheritance. Therefore, it is not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. So those living according to the flesh cannot unlock their inheritance. Amen? Amen. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will what? Live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. These are what? These are sons and daughters of God with an inheritance. How can you not? You look at, you can't be a son and daughter of God without an inheritance. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption through, by which you cry out, Abba, Father. 
the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then what? Heirs. Heirs are those who receive an inheritance. Heirs of God in what? Joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we what? We suffer with him. There's another requirement, isn't it? If we suffer with him. Look at the world is against you. The world hates you. Does everybody get this? You'll be hated. You'll be persecuted. They can't stay in your presence because you carry the presence of God and they carry the presence of the devil. They will come after you in multiple ways. That you'll be persecuted for not cooperating and laughing at their unseen, ungodly, dirty, filthy events and jokes. Hello? And we are joint heirs with Christ if we will suffer with him. And that means you need endurance. Amen? That we also may be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That's a part of your inheritance. The glory that's in you. For the creation was subjected to fertility not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God as an inheritance. For we know that the whole world, whole, whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body. In other words, that's a part of our inheritance. We get in a new body, man. Hallelujah. No more flesh of light. No more old man. He'd be history. No more goofy thoughts. Oh. No more ungodly desires. No more lusts. No more of those attacks. New glorified body. Amen. Hallelujah. You can think where you want to go when you be there. Amen. Hallelujah. Scuba dive with no gear. Like I'd say, play tennis on both sides. You can play basketball on the same side of the court, other sides of the court. Hallelujah. Verse 23. <laughs> Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the uh, adoption and redemption of our body. For we who are saved in this hope, and this hope that is seen is not hope. For what one does not why does, for, why does one still hope for what he sees? We are hoping for the things that are not visible yet, even though we see them spiritually. But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance or what we call endurance. For you are in need of endurance. In other words, we are all heavenly bound. This place is totally diminishing Bit by bit. You don't even belong here. That's why you have to sleep. You have to regenerate with sleep here. We've tried out with that. I know I did. Cost thousands of dollars. <laughs> Weeks up. But boy, when you came down, man. Then you fleshed out. But you just couldn't do it. Many people die trying to do it. We are joint heirs of Christ. And if we suffer, listen, we must have, this is the second thing we must do. Not only get into God's presence, but we must have an understanding. Amen? Amen. That if we suffer with him, endure with him, take authority and dominion like him. And remember your inheritance is an internal access to God's plane of reality. And existence. You have access to his plane of reality and existence. Does somebody get that? That's powerful. You can go to the throne room at any time. 
You can connect with the eternal creator at any time. That's a part of your inheritance. Nobody else can. Nobody else can get to him the way you can. Nobody. That's a part of your benefit and inheritance. Hello? <clears throat> First Peter 1. There's a lot of people out there trying to go up another way, trying to connect with the eternal one another way. They use demonic witchcraft, Ouija boards, tarot cards, horrified scopes. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Fortune cookies. Oh, I want to read my cookie. Don't read them. <laughs> They're called fortunate cookies. Unfortunately, you ate, read it, now you got a curse on you. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance, what? Incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. It's reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by what? Various trials, mistakes, failures, persecutions, suffering. That the genuineness of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory." Receiving the end of your what? Faith. The salvation of your souls. You and I have a living hope. That means it's activated. Whose responsibility for keeping your hope activated? Ours. So the word says stir yourself up. Amen? We have a living hope. That's your connection. Again, the third thing I want to share ex expressly is your cooperation and obedience to his call, his word, and his purpose. It's going to take obedience, isn't it? Amen? It's going to take his presence, it's going to take understanding, and then it's going to take obedience. This is the part of unlocking your inheritance. James 1. Verse 12. There's something about your inheritance that we all desire. It's called freedom. Freedom. Freedom is a benefit. It's a part of an inheritance of ours. We are free. Now, we have a free will, but in our inheritance, we choose, according to our will, to be pleasing to him. So we choose his will instead of our own. That's the place of denying yourself. Amen? It's in every constant thing. Listen, we are on the cutting edge of a decision of receiving an inheritance or receiving a destruction. We are on the cutting edge all the time of making a decision of which one it's going to be. One can bring a destruction to us. Takes one choice. One turn. Open the door to the enemy to steal. Everything you and I do, we're on the cutting edge of decision that can harm us or bless us. Does everybody get it? Verse 12, was we there? Blessed is the man who endures those temptations that put you on the edge of decision. <laughs> the cutting edge of decision. For whom he has, for when he has been what? 
approved. He will receive the crown of life. That's a part of your inheritance. But you must have that endurance that we talked about. Amen? Amen. He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own emotions, desires, or lusts, and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and to sin when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. So those that will head into death without inheritance from Christ, go to hell. Does everybody get it? So just because you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior one day, and you deserve this, a desire to serve the devil because you're taking your free will to serve the devil the next day, and you die in that condition, you no longer have an eternal inheritance. That's been severed and broke because it's under covenant. Amen? You break covenant. That's why the Lord says, grab hold of me, I'll grab hold of you. You let go of me, I'm letting go of you. Hello. Endurance, these are attacks to steal your inheritance because sin will delay, block, or even remove it. 1 John chapter 2. Well, I think we need to know the things that will lock our inheritance. Amen? Oh, happy day. Freedom, dominion, authority, health, prosperity. All of these are part of our inheritance. If you're willing to stand firm on believing and accepting and executing what he says instead of what the world says. Verse 15, do not love the world. Why? Because you won't have an inheritance or you'll lose it. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is what? Amen. Passing away. It's perishing. It's decaying. It's diminishing. And the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides for what? Forever. Again, the world is passing away. It's decaying, it's perishing, it's coming to an end. In fact, the end of the age is coming very soon. Why? Because it's under evil corruption. And those that have no inheritance or have sold their inheritance will be eternally lost. In 2 Peter 1. In verse 2. And then one more scripture. Again, we are entering a time of a large piece of our inheritance is about to be released. In verse 2, let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly precious, great and precious promises. Is that a part of your covenant? Part of your inheritance? Part of your benefits? Promises. Amen. That through these you may be partakers of what? The divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, does everybody grab hold of that? You will be neither barren or what? Unfruitful in the knowledge of Christ. Why? That knowledge is about his promises and covenant, which is allows you to partake of his divine nature. Why? Because 
you are an heir of Christ and a joint heir with him, where you have daily benefits loaded to you every day. They're being released. It's a part of your inheritance. Oh, I pray everybody gets this today. I pray you get it. Why? Because that really seals your identity of who you truly are. Verse 9. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten, there it is again, that word forgotten, that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never, what, stumble. For an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. An entrance. A supply for you. That's a part of your inheritance. Amen? And we'll close at 1 Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. Think of how many times people, you start wanting to grumble and complain or you got it sucked into it. Not really. My gosh, wait a minute. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> Slap your own self. I got an inheritance. What am I worried about? This is where all things are going to work to the what? Not to the bad, to the good. Even our dumb mistakes. As long as we're under the blood, you put it under the blood, you're reconnected to the inheritance. Amen? Verse 50, 1 Corinthians 50. Now that doesn't mean give you right to every weekend you're going to go out and do the same old thing again. Hello? And, re and then repent and expect you to receive your inheritance. Uh-uh. Because God knows it's not true repentance. Amen. Only true repentance cleanses. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you, mystery, we will, shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. This is the part where we get that final redemption of our body. We can scuba dive and play tennis and do all those. We can go wherever you want. Beloved, I tell you, mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Hello, at the last trumpet. You think it's any coincidence we've got a president called Trump? For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption, corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be what? Steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Unlocking your inheritance. Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for the preparation of the big chunk of our inheritance coming. Let us get prepared and ready. Keep us thirsty and hungry for your righteousness. Keep us in your presence. Keep us connected to you in every area. And continue to remind us as we maintain the connection with the Holy Spirit who is the guardian of our inheritance, the reminder of our inheritance, and the stir that stirs us up to connect. Lord, let us be zealous and not jealous. And let us maintain an attitude and gratitude. And with wisdom and knowledge and understanding and discernment, see things through. And the attempt of the enemy that tries to destroy us. 
so that your name can be glorified by us receiving and executing our inheritance on earth as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.